I want to share a message with you this morning that I've titled Hunger for God. How many of you are hungry for God? I want more of God at this time in my life than I ever, ever have felt before. I, I, I want God. I, I want more and more of God. <clears throat> I don't want to be guided by my feelings, Pastor Juan. I want, I want the presence of God in my life. I want to follow hard after him the way David described in the book of Psalms. As I begin, I want to share just a quick story about a young man who had this hunger within him that would not leave him. It would not, he, he couldn't leave it alone. He had a, a passion in his heart that, that was incessant. It was, it, was, it was a hunger within him that consumed him. In the 1700s, this man um, uh, had a desire in his heart to, to see great things for God and for the kingdom of God. But this man had a lot of, a lot of things against him. He, he, he stuttered. He stuttered badly. He was a young man without training, without resources, and his wife was very uh, mentally ill. He, his only job he could find, he, he was an apprentice for a shoemaker. That's what he did. One day, he read a book uh, by a, uh, an explorer named John Co uh, Captain Cook, and he was so impacted by, by the stories that he read that he made a globe of the world. And making the world, he saw the different countries and, and he got the globe and, and, and he felt a hunger welling up within him. And, and as, he, as he made this globe and identified the different areas of, of, of the world, he, he, he put his hands on the globe and he said, God, he, he sobbed over the world. And he said, God, here am I, God. He said, send me. He had this passion welling up. And he didn't know how to go about it, what to do. So he went and presented one day to the leadership of the church where he attended. And he, he, he presented his idea. And one of the leaders heard him, saw him, listened to him stuttering. And he said to him, young man, he said, sit down and be quiet. He said, if God, when he's ready to save all the heathen, he'll do it without you and he'll do it without me. Don't worry about it. One thing that man was correct about is that God saved millions without him. He was not part of it when he could have been. Many people tried to discourage Willie. His name is Willie. Reminding him about his condition, his crazy wife. And they said, you have, there's no way. Willie believed God because there was this passionate hunger in him that wouldn't leave him alone. 11 years passed and during those 11 years he prepared as best that he could during that time he learned how to speak Latin he learned how to speak Greek Dutch French and he already knew English five languages finally after so many years he, he received his license to preach and he had this saying that he believed in he said expect great things from God and attempt great things from God and with that saying and with his faith in God, Willie and his wife finally managed to get things together. In 1793, they sailed for India. <clears throat> they immediately arrived there and immediately they, 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 were, they were confronted by radical Hindus that almost killed them, the whole party. Because of the dangers, uh, the guide said, we're not going to take you to the villages. We, they... they they said, we'll take you so far and that's it. You're on your own. But Willie thought about quitting, but the hunger within him would not leave him. <clears throat> they went, they arrived, they began their work. And shortly after arriving and beginning, his son got sick. And his son died. And he thought about quitting, but the hunger within him would not leave him alone. After his son died, his wife lost her mind completely a few years later she died his second wife died and Willie thought about quitting but the hunger that was in him would not leave him alone many years passed Willie did many things and he died at the age of 73 years by the time he, had, he died he had translated the Bible into 34 languages he founded India's first college and he established 45 schools where they taught the gospel. 
He alleviated hunger by teaching the locals new ways of agriculture. And he managed to free many people from many families, especially women, from slavery. Today he's considered one of the greatest heroes of India. Willie, you may not know him by just Willie, but by his name, full name, is the great missionary William Carey. He was not satisfied because of the incessant hunger that he felt. Today there are approximately 25 million believers in India. And William Carey was believed to be the first modern missionary to bring the gospel. Perhaps you have many things that are working against you. Perhaps you're like this shoemaker, apprentice of a shoemaker, who stuttered, who was in poverty, who had little to offer, but an incessant hunger to see great things from God. I want to tell you that God will take that and he'll use it and he'll take you and prepare you and launch you to see great things for the kingdom of God. He refused to be, to be led by natural things and by natural feelings. And he chose instead to follow the witness of God within him that was bringing and causing this hunger. You see, God, God, God has left us his word. And we don't trust in feeling. Pastor Juan preached an amazing message at the 11 o'clock service. <clears throat> and I, just to piggyback on what he had said, there comes a time when we realize that feelings are just temporary. They're just there for a little while. God did give us emotions, okay? And, and they're good. Emotions are good. But emotions don't override faith. Emotions are not greater than faith. So it's not emotions come by hearing. It's faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing the word of God. And faith then works by love, it says in Galatians. And, and, and he had this love for God. And he wanted to see great things happen. <clears throat> I want to tell you, read a brief story about a woman who was led by feelings <laughs> and her husband, and they suffered drastically in the book of Ruth in chapter 1 about Naomi and her husband Elimelech. In chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and their two sons. And the, name of, and the man's name was Elimelech. <clears throat> the name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of, of their two sons were Malon and Kilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. And then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took wives of the women of Moab, the name of one was Orpha, Orpa, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And then both Malon and Kilion also died. So the woman survived her two sons and her husband. And in verse 6 it says, And then she arose one day with her two daughters-in-law, and she might return to the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Thank you, Father, for your word. The first point that I want to point out to you is looking in the wrong places. <clears throat> this hunger that we feel, this hunger that we feel, and I, I, I pray that, that you're connected to God in such a way that, that you're, you're feeling, you're not only feeling, but knowing that his presence is there with you. And when, you, well, when his presence fills your life, when, when his presence comes and, and he manifests his goodness in your life, that there, that there happens that, that, that a hunger. You know, like, like when you eat nachos and you take one nacho and it's really good. How many can you eat just one nacho? Come on. Or just a couple of popcorns, you know. And it, it, you have to, right? You have to eat more, right? 
and God shows you his greatness and maybe you're in a really great service like today or last week or, and, and, and God touches you and you see something and the next week same and wow you say and the more you feel the more you receive the more you want and this hunger is happening so Naomi and Elimelech they lived in the land of, of Bethlehem in the city of Bethlehem there was something that was way off during those years it was the time of judges and God's word says that during that time the people did whatever was right in their own eyes kind of what people do today okay if it feels right just do it who cares no morals no values just do whatever and their values get thrown out Pastor Juan because feeling is more important okay because, because feeling overrides anything and if it feels good just go ahead well these individuals were living in this land and they, they lived in the right place but there was nothing happening in the right place it was dry and it was empty so many churches nowadays they're not preaching the word of God the word of God is not, is not happening in those places the way it should be happening and the people are hungry and they're not receiving bread and the fact is that this is the house of bread and there should be bread and it should be fresh bread from heaven and it should be bread that, that sustains that, that gives strength that, that brings vision that, that brings hope that, that brings strength and, and, and it's not happening and the people are hungry and when there is no bread guess what happens they go out and look for it elsewhere and that's what happened to this family now this man really it, when you look at this man's name you, you, you have to say that you know people's names were given for a reason in many times in, in, in Bible times they were given for a reason not just because and Elimelech means our Lord is king he had a destiny somebody saw greatness in him okay and it could be that he was an important man in, in where he lived it could be that 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 he have, he was a man of authority maybe he was even wealthy and had plenty of resources but when there was no bread things changed and he left and the land of plenty Bethlehem was not giving the bread that he needed they left and they decided to go to Moab the land of Moab is the land of sin Moab means incest or sexual sin that's what that means Moab came from uh, uh, one of the sons of Lot and if you remember Lot's story Lot fell from God exactly in that way when incest happened to him and in his family and he had two daughters daughters gave birth and these two daughters were the they, uh, tr children born and formed two people the Moabites and the Ammonites one of the gods of the of the Moabites Molech Chemosh one of the uh, both of them um, I believe Molech was was the one most known to the Moabites and and Chemosh to, to the Ammonites <clears throat> One of the ways that he required worship was to pass children through the fire. And many children were lost in fire. This is where, this is where Elimelech and Naomi went. You see, when individuals are not receiving from God and they go out into the world, they're going to suffer drastically. And suffer, and, and the suffering is way way much more than they had ever thought that they would have to pay because they stay longer than they thought they would have to stay and the consequences are much more severe how many of you know that that when you give the enemy an inch he takes a foot and he doesn't he doesn't play for fun he doesn't play to entertain you he wants to destroy you and he wants to destroy your family he wants to leave you without a legacy. And Elimelech 
the Bible says he died never having reached his dreams never having provided for his family and he left Naomi and it's interesting because her two sons though they were born in Judah the names that they have make me question wow that's interesting that the names of Malon and Kilion mean disease and weakness or sickness and weakness and I'm like what kind of future do you think they're going to have you know they left they left the, the promised the, the, the place that, that God had designed for them prepared for them however <clears throat> some of the fault was not just I mean all of the fault was not just on, on Elimelech and Naomi the fact is that there was no bread in the house of bread and, it, and, and they were led astray because they were not getting the word of God listen the word of God happens in this house this house right here and you don't need to go looking elsewhere because the day that we stop seeing the house of God minister the word of God is the day we'll have to go to a different church it is the presence of God that makes all the difference all the difference and the presence of God is in this house God is doing great things in this church if you've been coming for a while you know because you've seen it and I invite you to press in and to get more and to get deeper and let God fill your life and let God change your life and let God fill your house and let God fill your families so what if they call you crazy at work that's okay they call you Jesus a madman come on who cares what they say they said Jesus was possessed by devils and you get upset because somebody calls you names <clears throat> however there was a wind of change that started to blow there was a wind of change that happened and I'm going to read verse 6 again quickly and then she arose after she had, Naomi had experienced all this pain with her daughters-in-law it says in verse 6 and she might return from the country of Moab because she'd heard she heard out there even though she was in the wrong place the word of God captured her the word of God reached her and listen, li listen to what it says it, it says that it says they, they, it, they'd heard that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread isn't it interesting that it doesn't say that the Lord had visited his people by, by bringing the rain back it doesn't say that nor does it say that, that, that God had visited his people and, and gave them new life or new hope. It doesn't say any of that. It says that he brought bread. It, said that, it says that, that once again, the house of bread had bread happening. That once again, that, 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 that where they had come from, that there was life there. So they made up their mind to return. Naomi says to, to Orpah and, and, and to Ruth, she says, you should go back home. I don't have any more sons. Go back to your families. I release you. You don't have to worry about me. I'm going back, and I believe I'll find family. Orpah cried. She was emotional. She was emotional. <laughs> and she went back. But there was something about Naomi that captured Ruth's heart. It captivated her. It caused her to be changed. Understand that Ruth had lived all her life in Moab. And she'd been part of the idol worship that had been going on. And she had seen the sacrifices. She had been there. But during the past 10 years, she had seen this lady something different about her listen when there's true hope in your life when there's true strength in your life when there's a true presence of God in your life people are going to know it 
believers and unbelievers. You don't have to be weird. I, you know, there, there are some people that like to be weird, and I don't like to be weird. You know, I don't, I don't like to... And, and, and you know, maybe the way I, 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 I pray or the way I believe or the way, just simply for what I do, maybe I'm weird as it is, you know? Who knows? I don't know. But, but I'm not talking about, hey, uh, getting up on the table at, at the restaurant, say, hey, we're going to pray. Everybody shut up. Put your foot spoon down. That's, that's weird. You're going to get thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> I've talked to people that have... And I'm not saying that there's no value in doing uh, a preaching on the streets corners because there is. There, but I've talked to many and, and they say there was little, little results out of that. And I'm not saying that there isn't, but all I, what I want to, to, to tell you is that God doesn't want to be weird. He, he wants you to be who you are and use the gifts that he's given you. Okay, now the world may say you're weird because you love Jesus and you speak in tongues and if that's it, then so be it. Okay? We're not going to accommodate or change that. that, that that's okay. <clears throat> she had seen something. In verse 16, look at, what, look at what Ruth tells her. In verse 16, Ruth said to her, Do not entreat me to leave you or to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, whatever home you live in, she says, that's going to be my home. And your people, you, th th though they don't know me, and I know I'm a Moabite, they'll be my people. And most of all, your God will be my God. And I want to change because I've seen this. I I've seen something different in you. And they went back, and God, listen, listen, church. Listen, familia. <clears throat> God changed this woman's destiny. She came out of an idolatrous late nation family. And God changed Ruth's destiny. Because as you read the story, and we're not going to read it all because I'm going to get to other uh, parts of the message, but when you read the whole story, you'll find that Ruth got married and they had a son named Obed. And Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David from whom came the lineage of Christ. You want to be in the lineage of heaven? Get into Jesus. You want your destiny to be changed? Return back. Listen to him. And let him change everything that is not going God's way in your life. And you're, you'll establish a destiny and you'll leave a legacy for your kids that say dad we didn't get it when we were kids but now we know that God is alive and we understand and now we know why you cry at night when you pray and now we know why you speak in tongues we understand and we see the greatness of God the power of God and the goodness of God <clears throat> God's word says I didn't say point number two, but it was listen and return. And, and Naomi, Naomi had to listen. She had to come back. She had to put up with what maybe uh, people would say about her when, when they saw her and they said, uh-huh, we told you not to leave. We told you not to do it. And you did it anyway. But she, she, was, she was willing to go through all that to come back to her roots and receive God in her, in her family one more time. I want to briefly talk about the bread of life. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. In John 6, 35, God's word says, Jesus came and he said to them, I am the bread of life. He is the bread that makes all the difference, church. All the difference. And he who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me will never thirst. So in one scripture you have, if you hunger for righteousness, you'll be filled. In the other scripture you have, I'm the bread of life. And if you come to me, you'll never thirst and you'll never hunger. What is hunger? <clears throat> True hunger is a hunger that, that, that you don't care what you have to do. You're going to satisfy that hunger. 
You don't care. And I don't know if you have ever had to go hungry before. I, I don't know. I praise God that I never have, you know. Um, <clears throat> my wife will make breakfast, and if she hasn't made dinner or something to eat by 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, wifey, um, it's, time to, to, it's time to get some stuff going over there, you know. <laughs> don't, don't you think maybe we can, I say we. We can make tortillas or something. That's about the, 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 the kind of hunger I've had to put up with. It's not a whole lot. But hunger, I'm talking about hunger. A hunger that is incessant. A hunger that doesn't leave you alone. It's the hunger that you'll satisfy at whatever cost. And Jesus said, he says, if you're hungry for righteousness... I won't let it go unnoticed. I won't, over, I won't look over it. It won't, it, it, it's not something that I'll, that I'll forget about. It, 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 I'll, I'll know. <clears throat> True hunger. You're not held back. You don't get tired. You, you, you don't stop. A passion arises within you. And you seek bread until you find it. Nothing and no one is going to stop you. William Carey was told by many, don't do it. And the hunger that he felt inside was one that he couldn't hold back. It was one that he couldn't stop. It consumed him. And he went forward. And even if they tell you not to go, you're going to go. It's a hunger that gives you courage to do things that you would never do before. That you would normally not try. But with hunger pains fill you. You, you go and you, and you seek until you find bread. Until God moves in your life. This is the spiritual hunger I'm talking about. <clears throat> a hunger, a passionate hunger. A hunger that changes. About a week ago, you know, the, the leadership, the pastors, we, we went to the conference in Texas and <clears throat> I heard... Amazing word. I was blessed. I hadn't gone to, to a conference in years. And uh, wow, my wife and I were, you know, we were blessed. It was great. The only thing, Pastor, is that it was busy. Man, it was busy. <laughs> we got back exhausted. We haven't had time to land yet. But God changed my life. Junior said the same thing. Hearing the, the word that was, that was preached and shared, I made a decision. I want more of God. I want more of God, more of God. I want more of God. Just a, just, just a little dabble, do you? That, that those days are long, long, long gone. Some people say, I don't care. I'll make it to heaven by the skin of my teeth. Man, that place has been filled up a long time ago. You better press in harder than that. Because the world, the enemy, is out to get you. And unless your faith is going to stand the test, you're going to fall in to his traps. And it'll look good. It'll seem good. It'll sound good. You're not anchored in him. You're going to give in to it. And these are the days when the true, the true men and women of God have to arise over the passions of the world. We live here today. And sin has never been no more, I mean, no more easily available in society like it is today. Wow. I was doing FCA for a while, and I told the kids, wow, I just can't believe how hard it must be to be a high school student these days. You, things are so available to you at your fingertips immediately you can be changed in focus and direction and, and what you were thinking that might have been from God immediately is stolen from you because it's so easy so these are the days men and women of God that we have to arise and defend our kids and defend our grandkids and defend what God has given us because if we don't who will 
And we can't look behind and say, I should have, I could have, and I would have. No, you can right now. But you got to feed this hunger. It's, it's got to be a hunger that, that says, I, I don't want to just go to church and, and feel a tingle and, and hear, a, a, hear a message and give offering and sing and it, just a little and great. We have to be changed. And we have to say, God, more. I want more of you, Father. And at this time in, in my life, I, I, it's what I, I am asking God. And I invite you to come and to share with my journey as I press in. And I say to Jesus, Lord, nothing else will satisfy. Nothing else will satisfy me. Maybe you are here and you have never heard a true invitation to come and enjoy the presence of God in your life. Maybe, maybe you've never really surrendered because salvation is all about surrender. It is. You surrender your own will to His. Your ways to His. You surrender your plans to Him. That salvation is all about. And if you have never accepted Jesus in your life, Today is your day. Today you can, you can once again take advantage of what happened at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Because Calvary, though it represented death, life as a result of his death, life now flows in us. And I invite you, and if you are here and you've never accepted him, to make that decision today. I hope that if you are, and that's you, in a few moments, you'll accept that invitation. But to you others, mom, dad, this hunger has to consume you. This, this hunger has to mean something to you. And if you go out and feed it with the wrong stuff, you'll end up having lost severely. You'll suffer loss like you have not imagined. <clears throat> you know, all of us deal with challenges. All of us deal with, with hard times. All of us do. But when you have the presence of God in you dwelling richly, and God is alive in you, these things just, I'm not saying that you don't feel them and they don't, they, they don't impact you. But they, they just never rise higher than the joy that you have in Christ. They never do. They never rise to that level. Yeah, there's some tough challenges that we experience. But they never rise when you are truly anchored in Christ. When his presence fills your life. <clears throat> I want to just be just transparent and then I'll invite you to pray. You know, <clears throat> my wife and I have, have experienced some tough times in our lives. And I'm not just talking about, you know, ba way back when we were first married. <clears throat> I'm talking about recent, here, now. You know, um, when divorce hit our family, wow, my wife and I looked at each other with tears in our eyes and and, and I told her, I never, ever thought I would live in, in this situation. I just never thought that. When we saw how it impacts my grandchildren, we cried. And sometimes it's, it, it becomes so, so hard that my wife and I always say, I don't even know how to pray. You know. And I don't know what, what, what your challenges are. But I want to let you know that God knows about them. That God sees your tears when nobody else sees them. That at night when it hurts and you're laying in bed, God is aware of that pain. And he tells you, mijo, mija, if you let me feel your hunger, if you let me change you, my joy 
will never be shaken from you. Are you hungry enough to say, God, evermore, Father, fill me. Like the woman at the well said, evermore, give me this water. Evermore, satisfy my thirst. I want more of God. And I invite you today, if that's you, I hope that nothing will hold you back. And you'll say, God, more of you. That's what I want, more of you. I've got to have this. And when you do, you'll discover the greatness that God has for you and has had for you all along. William Carey had to put up with a lot, but he accomplished great things for God eventually. Press in, press in, press in, and don't give up. Press in. Your kids are worth it. Press in. Your family is worth it. Press in. Eternity is worth it. Press in. And let God change, change your, your, your life, your plans. Your, and let God just consume you. His plans are always better. His ways are always greater. And His love is always, always much more meaningful and transforming. Will you do it?